to Stockholm. Pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much. Have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah, it's my first time here, and it's a you know it's a beautiful city, amazing architecture, and really nice that it's by the water as mm. well. And I want to start off by congratulating you to um, a very touching and beautiful movie, Una Noche, which has not only impressed us here at the film festival. I know that you, you um, it premiered at the Berlin Film Festival and scooped a lot of prizes at, at Tribeca. I mean, how does that feel for your first feature movie and get so much praise? Yeah, I was really, really happy with the reception. Um, it's, you know, when we were making the film, I wasn't really thinking about the audience so much. I was just focused on trying to make the best movie that we could make. And, you know, it's very nice that people want to see it and that people are reaching out to us. Could you just give us a brief summary of the story? Yeah, it's about uh, three young people in Havana who on this particular day uh, get into a situation where they have to leave. The, they have to leave Cuba and they come together and start that journey. I, I read that you were in Havana a few years before this and you were there for quite some time before you then started film school at NYC, NYU. Yeah. Um, could one say that your time in Havana was sort of a pre-research for what then became the movie, Una Noche? Yeah, I think definitely. The first time that I went there, there were so many people who had stories about having, you know, tried to leave or family who had left or wanting to leave the, the country. So it was something that obviously touched a lot of people there. So I was kind of really, I was kind of interested because I'd never seen Cuba really on film before either. Mm. And it was such an incredible place visually to, to just, you know, to be in Havana, it's, it's kind of stunning and there's so much energy, so much vibrancy and so many stories that we've, you know, I felt were kind of crying out to be told. Because I read also regarding the casting process that you sort yeah. of didn't want actors in a sense and it was quite a long process. Tell us about that. Right, initially I did actually, I, I thought we could find actors so we started looking for actors. Um, but you know, you don't get that many young people, you know, kind of teenagers who've had that much experience for number one. And number two, the film, the, the acting school there is pretty small, so it's a restricted number of people. So aesthetically, I had an idea of what I wanted the actors to look like. And um, a lot of the people who were kind of involved at that age range in, in film or in television or theater were, were kind of quite, theatrical in a way and I was looking for something a lot more subtle in the acting so um, I decided to go with non-actors and we did a huge street casting mm -hmm. so we went out with a lot of flyers and just started going everywhere where young people would go and giving out flyers and, and just telling people to tell their friends to come to the to the castings and that's how we we kind of got in touch with the main actors what was, I mean, did it say click when you saw the two that you then chose? Was it like, okay? Yeah, when I saw Darielle, mm -hmm. I was actually with the casting assistant and we were at the music school. We weren't actually going to go in, but I thought, well, we should really, you know, I was trying to kind of look under every single stone possible. And so we went in and he was in the courtyard um, and there were a lot of other, you know, students around and he was surrounded by a lot of women. <laughs> he was surrounded by all of these girls, actually, and um, he was obviously, you know, very charismatic, and they were all listening to him and laughing, and so we went over, and I gave him a flyer, and I said, come to a casting tomorrow, and I knew immediately that we'd found the character, because um, he just seemed very charismatic, very at ease, and, yeah, it mm. was just kind of instinctive with him, and then he came in, and his acting was, you know, very natural, and he was, you know, really great. And then with Anna Lynn, one of the casting assistants found her um, at the beach with her family. And so that's how she got involved. She came to, to a casting session as well. And yeah, it was, it was kind of instantaneous that I knew. Because we'd seen a lot, a lot of people. Mm. I saw almost 3,000 people. Wow. So, yeah. <clears throat> but then I also read that you spent a year with these two main characters to sort of really get yeah. them to get to know each other, to play, you know, brother and sister. And I mean, it, that's quite unusual. Yeah, there were actually three. The, um, Javier is Anna Lynn's uh, brother in the mm. film. And 
he was found through looking at a lot of photographs of students from schools. The producer, Sandy Perez, went out with Betty, one of the, uh, the casting assistants, and they just took pictures of everybody who could look like Anna Lynn's brother. Mm. And um, yeah, he stood out from his photo as well. And the casting was, was really, you know, that was kind of, it was a really long process in itself. And during that time, I was already working with Darielle. But then when we had all three of them together, we started rehearsals and that was, you know, it was very important for me that they really felt like brother and sister, that um, Darielle and Javier felt like best friends, like mm. they really knew each other. And, you know, they developed this kind of shorthand with one another during that whole process. So, so, uh, so yeah. I mean, how long was the process from beginning to end, from shooting the last picture or the last frame? Well, from, the, I, from having the idea for the film um, and starting to make my thesis was, was six years ago from, t from now. So it's been a really, yeah, because we were writing it, then raising the funds, then going out to Cuba, shooting, six cast, years. you know, locations. Everything. And now that, you know, the film is out and it's so awarded and praised, do you feel pressure after, you know, making that first bang, boom impression? Do I feel pressure on for the, the next, next project? Film? You know what? Um, I just I think the biggest pressure for my for me comes from myself probably. Mm. So I I want to make the next film good. Do you have? <laughs> so can you reveal really what the next? Sorry. Oh yeah. No. The next film. Is, the next film. Um, yeah. It's a right now. I'm working on a script that starts in Rio and comes to New York, mm. and it's based on. Uh, one male male character and his kind of journey of personal discovery. It's a very intimate movie. Bearing in mind that you are, of course, an inspiration to young aspiring directors and screenplay writers, do you have any piece of advice for them along the way? Um, I would say that often people will tell you that it's very difficult mm. to, mm. to make your first movie and, you know, a lot of people will say no. But I think that you just have to keep going and you have to really not try not to listen to that. Try, and just if you, you know, if you have your, have your conception of what your film is and just go forward and make it happen. Well, thank you so much for bringing such a beautiful movie to the Stockholm Film Festival. It's an honor to have you here and best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.